Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna do this watercolor of berries in the snow from a photo that I took when I was walking in the snow the other day. If you would like a real-time version of this project, you can find it up now in Critique Club. Critique Club is $5 a month and has dozens and dozens and dozens of real-time tutorials with two new ones posted every month and the ability to upload your artwork for feedback from me. I'm starting off gathering up my supplies and I decided to use a pretty limited palette as usual. And the watercolors I'm using are by the company Renaissance and my friend April has a shop on Etsy. She is the American distributor of the paints and um, I will put a link to that with a coupon code so you can save 10% off if you'd like. This is not a sponsored video but I am an affiliate and she is a friend so I do want to let you know before we uh, get too far going here. We're also going to use a product called masking powder which we will get to in a minute and it's new and it's fun and I've never seen it before and I can't figure out how the heck it's made so um, mysteries all around. So I'm beginning here by sketching with my black Black wing, matte, pen, black wing matte pencil. This is their darkest lead and uh, I'm still sketching pretty light and this is a really soft pencil so it does erase pretty easily if I need it to but I do tend to use these darker pencils when I am doing a tutorial to make sure you can see it. Although you know it is kind of light and I did go in and erase anything I didn't need. Now this product here I'm applying with a very stiff stencil like brush. It's actually the Art Sherpa Cloud brush which is a really like a stiff nylon bristle brush. A stencil brush or fabric brush would also work really well. And the reason I'm using this is so I can really um, kind of rub that powder into the paper. I'm not sure what it is. It acts almost like you've waxed the paper, but you can remove it after it's dry with an eraser. So it's really kind of cool. It's um, unlike anything I've ever used. And I have played around with it a little bit, but I thought this would be a really good subject for it with those big like, you know, clumps of snow. Now I'm going to choose some colors here that have some granulating properties and that will kind of like neutralize each other out a bit because I want to play with the the bright red against the grays against the um, you know blue and yellow undertones that I'm seeing and I just thought it was a nice palette and I used kind of a red iron oxide and a Naples yellow deep you could also use yellow ochre um, or a golden yellow and um, I'm using a like a uh, quinacridone red and a um, quinacridone rose for my two brighter reds you know just basically playing with those with those colors I'm using cerulean blue as my blue but you could use ultramarine blue as well that would also give you that granulating effect and uh, you can mix with it and whatnot ultramarine's a stronger blue now look at that see you could see how the masking powder just resists the water it's like the water doesn't stick where you put the masking powder it's really really interesting so it kind of acts like it's waxed but if you like if you decide to work an area like say you're painting clouds and you want to work an area with your brush and keep going over and over and over you can start to pull that masking fluid up or or actually the masking powder up or, or soften the effect a bit so um it's kind of fun to play with i it's it's going to be really useful i think i just need some more time to experiment with it more i decided to put some just some dabs of red in the background to um suggest berries kind of off into the distance there are these bushes everywhere in the woods and along the side of the road they seem to grow in really boggy areas I'm not sure what they are I always think they're like bittersweet but they're they're more red than orange so I'm not really sure what they are to be honest they're pretty I'm sure of that um, and I'm kind of throwing in some shadows in the in the ground there because this this little snowmobile trail that my dog and I walk on it has it's very wet and things hadn't frozen solid yet so there is like kind of um puddles I guess you would say it's uh, kind of like where the snow can't stick because it's just too wet so I'm putting in some shadows here to signify that and um yeah now at this point I've let the paper dry and I'm going in with just a regular white plastic eraser and I am erasing off the powder so that I can paint into that if I want to like you know to give some reflections um or even some areas where you can kind of see through the berries you can see through the snow to the berries and it's kind of translucent I want to be able to add shading to the snow so I got to remove the powder in order to do that so plain old eraser seriously guys I have no idea how this is made it's uh it's uh, I'm gonna have to like I'm gonna have to investigate I'm so curious as to how that's made but luckily it's not super expensive you get a, a jar of it um I think it's around eight dollars um it'd be eight ten percent less like 80 cents off with my coupon code um but it's neat and I think it would last a really long time so if you like I don't like the really hard edges that regular masking fluid gives me so I don't use it very often unless I really do need it like I'm painting something that I'm 
like I'm painting glass and something with a lot of sparkly reflections and I don't want to use gouache because sometimes when you use gouache it does make the whatever you're painting feel a little bit more matte and opaque and less shiny so sometimes I do want to do that um, and I want the hard edges and I use masking fluid for that but in general masking fluid is just so harsh and I, I don't like that look personally myself but the powder I feel like I'm able to get a more soft and natural looking edge but it might be for you. It might not, you know, and if you don't have masking powder and you want to do this, simply don't wet the areas where you want the snow to be. Just just wet around them and paint your background in. You can't be as free as when you're painting the background in with a powder on. Um, so, you know, it might look a little stunted and, and um, stalted here and there, but it definitely is doable. So I don't feel like you have to have this. You could even use masking fluid if you wanted to. Just it's going to have that rougher, that harder edge. Um, but then again, you can always just go over it with a damp brush after it's dry, you know, and after you remove it to soften that. So, you know, there are many ways to get this effect, friends, and use what you have. Unless you want to try this, then use that. Um, I'm just kind of using different mixes. Basically, I'm using those two reds. I'm mixing some, so I'm using some of the quinacridone red by itself. I'm using some quinacridone red plus the iron oxide. I'm using some quinacridone, some, uh, quinacridone rose plus cerulean blue, some quinacridone rose on its own. Uh, say quinacridone 10 times fast and see what a <laughs> what a uh, dingbat you sound like and uh, yeah that's basically that's basically how we painted the berries and I'm going in with I'm over I'm doing the branch part over again because I wasn't really happy with the um, with how dark it was originally so I'm kind of uh, pumping that up a little bit and now I'm going back to the reference photo and I'm zooming in a little bit. I want to, and I, I'll post the reference photo on my Instagram page. Um, I was noticing some like yellow golden um, light in the snow on the branches. So I'm putting just a very light touch of that golden yellow, Naples yellow color I used on there. I'm also softening um, the edge a bit. I'm wetting, I'm wetting some of the area and then I'm dabbing in some of that quinacridone rose. So it's kind of like you're looking through the translucent edges where it's starting to melt and get crystallized of the snow and yeah just kind of taking out some of that real stark white because there's a lot of really bright white areas there that I want to soften and I'm adding in some shadows which are made with the red iron oxide and cerulean blue you can also use like a, a Venetian red an English red an Indian red or even a burnt sienna in place of the red iron oxide they're actually all made from or can be all made from the same pigment so um just kind of get in that ballpark and if you don't have exactly what i have then grab whatever's closest it's going to work it's going to be fine i was fortunate to receive the entire range of renaissance watercolors that's what you see in those pans of their tube paints and um you know, it's it's funny. When I first tried the tubes, I was like, oh, I like the tubes a lot better with the, than the pans. But now that I've had these for a couple of years, I think I like the pans better. I think I feel like the, the pans just re-wet a lot faster um, and a lot better. These dry down really well, but I, I feel like I want to spray them like five minutes before I begin painting to get them to kind of come alive. They're very transparent. The only downside to these paints is that I notice if I use them fairly thickly, like on some of the areas where I have the red really dark, they will get a sheen to them from like the gum arabic they used so that's um that's something to, th to think about um the i ended up actually using some gouache over the berries so it, that took over that took out the sheen which was which was fine but um that's one thing i've noticed when i do like a lot of glazing or if i use it in mass tone i do get that sheen on most of the colors so that's something to be aware of if you work really diluted with your watercolors then you're not it's not going to be a problem but i tend to go in kind of dark sometimes with punchy darks and then you will get a little bit of a glare but if that happens to you because it happens with different just several brands of paint that do that um if that happens to you when you're all done you can spray it with a fixative and that's gonna even out the sheen you could wax the watercolor like i showed you with the uh, snowy door that we did uh, last week or the week before so there's definitely ways to um to get rid of that sheen you know but honestly i felt like i needed to mention it the paints are very affordable especially for how much you get but i feel like that really needs to be mentioned so you know what you're getting um but anyway april is a great shopkeeper she's wonderful so uh, i definitely recommend purchasing from her if uh if you are in need but the masking powder because that's a really unique thing that i haven't seen anywhere before uh yeah, I think it's I think it's fun. I like to try different things that are actually new things and not just the same old thing rebranded, you know. 
and now I'm going to spend a lot of time working on these berries. And when I looked back at my footage, I could not believe this painting took me two hours. I was just gobsmacked. I thought this was an hour max, but no, it, I spent two hours on this. Um, but you know, the time flew, so I must have been having a really good time. I actually started it on Thursday last week, and then um, I thought, oh, I'm going to finish this up Friday morning, but I had some other errands to do, so I couldn't spend as much time working on it as I thought. And then I ended up putting in another about 45 minutes on it today. And I was like, wow, this is actually, this took longer than I expected, but I did enjoy it. And I think it's just because you have all those little berries. And even though it's it's quite repetitious, um, you know, yeah, it, it does take some time. But it was fun. Even though it was repetitious, it was fun. So I'd say if you are watching the lesson in Critique Club, and I do say this in the lesson, if you want to, um, you know, turn off, uh, once you get the gist of how the berries are painted and the different, like, techniques you can use if you wanted to just kind of um you know turn off the player and put a movie on or something and listen to that while you're painting that would totally be fine I think you'd get the gist but sometimes it's nice just to see a painting come together um the entire way so here I'm using the the gouache almost for texture because these berries actually they do have kind of like a I don't know if you call it citrusy skin but it is like not it's not a translucent berry like a um you know, sometimes you see like currants and berries like that. Like, you know how grapes are kind of a little bit translucent. These aren't a translucent berry. They don't, they have like an opaque skin. So I thought that using the, the gouache would actually give me the character of the skin a lot more than the watercolor. Where the watercolor is very translucent, the gouache is much more opaque and velvety. And it would really represent that skin a little bit better. Almost look a little bit waxy. And uh, that's what I was going for. So that worked out really well. I kind of just had a watercolor underpainting. Honestly, I probably could have just you know, not have done the underpainting with watercolor, but I do let the watercolor peek out here and there. So I think it does add a little bit of depth and layering that we, I, I think if I just used the gouache, it would be somewhat lacking or it almost feel disjointed to go from the white of the paper on the snow to opaque gouache. I, I think that would be a little bit too jarring. So having that kind of bridge of watercolor red underneath the gouache peeking out in places, I think helps um, connect all the elements, but obviously you can do whatever you want. I just love it when you add those opaque highlights. I feel like it's just kind of magical looking. Now this is something I actually ended up changing. I was putting in little dabs of snow, like I was thinking of little uh, individual snowflakes that are kind of crystallizing over the edge. And at first I liked the look of it, look of it but then um, stepping away from it, which is really, really good to do. If you can take a break in your painting, step away and come back to it. Hindsight is twenty twenty. Let me tell you, you are gonna find things that you didn't notice were wrong. The the just by sitting there and painting it, you're gonna those things are gonna stick out when you come back and you look at that painting again. So I highly recommend taking breaks. Another thing you can do if you don't have the time to take a break, or maybe you've got you know three hours to paint one day and you don't want to waste the time by taking a break. If you take a photo of it and then look at the photo, or if you hold it to a mirror, a lot of times those um, those problems will stick out at you. Uh, but I wasn't quite sure what I was thinking about the snow as I was doing it. I thought I liked it, but then I was also like, well, I've already done it, so I guess I'm going to keep doing it. But um, you'll see later on that I do scrub that out and uh, use a pen instead for more crisper, um, delicate, delicate little um, reflections, I guess, there in the edge of the snow. But, you know, you got to try stuff. You have to experiment. That's the only way you're going to learn. If you are constantly having... Um, I would say if you're constantly having success after success after success in your paintings, then you are not taking risks and you are going to get burned out and bored. You really need to try different things and see what will happen and not, you know, make your painting so precious that you can't be afraid to ruin it, right? I mean, like this was just a, a photo I took. I was like, oh, that's pretty. I bet that'd make a painting. I took a photo. I took a photo of some like wood mushrooms covered in snow too. Uh, and, you know, the more of these things that you photograph, the more of these things you try to paint, the less they will become... Um, sacred and you will be able to you know kill your darlings basically if something doesn't come out right you can mess it up and try again or you can decide okay that didn't work on to the next thing the more that you paint the more things you try the better you're going to be and yes you're going to fail more you're going to have more mistakes and you're going to make more messes but you are going to grow and you are going to get better and you don't get better by doing safe things that you know you can paint well all the time and not to say this is some real challenging subject but um, sometimes it's those simple subjects that end up being the most challenging. 
And I think if you are inspired to paint something, if you're just like on, on a walk or, um, I don't know, something catches your eye and you're like, oh, that inspires me. I think I'd like to paint it. Don't second guess it. Don't second guess yourself. Just try it, draw it, paint it, see what you think. It may be not that great after you do it. You may realize, huh, I don't know what I saw in that. Uh, I guess it wasn't a strong enough subject matter for me to paint, or maybe I didn't give it the time, or maybe it was the wrong medium, but you've got to try these different things in order for them to work. Now, the center branch here that I did first, the one that has a lot of the detail, I'm considering that my focal point of the painting. This is really kind of a background. I mean, it's it doesn't have a really strong focal point. I'm gonna tell you that. It is something that is a little bit more ambient of a subject. It's something that I think would make a really nice um, note card design or something like if uh have you ever bought like a notepad and it's got a um like a uh it's got like a print like really desaturated really light kind of really um you know maybe like 10 percent saturation or 10 percent opacity and then you've got lines over it, it's like a little notepad that's what this reminds me of or like uh checks you know when you order checks does anybody still use checks um and they'd have like a kind of like a uh, really translucent type of design in the background. That's what this kind of reminds me of. But I still think it's very pretty and it was definitely fun to paint and to, to make those berries all a little bit different from each other, to kind of keep the interest, keep the eye moving around. And it's those simple subjects that will give you that practice. Also working with volume and repetition and um, you know, keeping things interesting, working with shadow and, and reflection. A situation like this where you are outdoors in everything's blanketed with snow, you've got light coming from everywhere. You've got the sunlight, but it is being bounced and reflected everywhere in the sun and in the snow. So it's a really fun way to play with light that way. And you can use really any sort of highlight anywhere to like uh, bring an edge forward. Like if there's a berry in front of another berry, but they're the same color, well, your highlight can bring that edge forward and kind of push things around in the space on that flat plane of paper. You can push things around in the space. And uh, even though it's very repetitive, I think it's a, it's a really good lesson. It's kind of like playing scales on the piano. You are repeating this lesson and you are approaching every berry and you're trying to, you know, figure out what are their places. Is this a supporting actor? Is this a focal berry? What do we, what do we have going on here? So it's good. It's good to do. Uh, now I'm going through with a scrubber brush. This brush is wonderful. It's a Menta scrubber by Royal and Langnickel. It is part of their Menta watercolor line series. And if you find these, just, just grab them. Grab them if you see them in a store. I don't know a place online that consistently sells open stock Menta brushes. If anybody knows, please let me know in the comments. I would appreciate it. I got mine from AC Moore before they went out of business because they sold them open stock. And I think they were like five bucks a piece regular price and then they go on sale all the time so um they were just they're just such a wonderful brush they're all uh, vegan and very thirsty like their their regular watercolor ones are very thirsty they also have the menta all media line which is very similar to the zen all media line which you see me use the zen all media brushes for gouache and acrylics they are workhorses they are my recommended gouache brush but the uh, the mental watercolor scrubbers, man, if you can find them, just grab grab a couple. You're going to want to have backups. Not that they wear out, but it's nice to have one if you lose it or one for your travel bag or whatever. And now I'm just finishing up with some gel pen details, just some gel pen highlights, redoing those little crystals at the edge of the snow and uh, sparkling up the things I want to have a little more sparkle. So I got a little more reflection on that branch in the center, which I kind of loosely call a focal point and uh, less as we get away from it. But I like how I varied the berries. I like how I made them a little bit bigger and the personality that, personality that they have. I love playing with the masking powder. And overall, I think that this was a successful painting for that reason. And uh, if you'd like to paint it in real time, check it out in Critique Club. There's just a peek at the Shinhan gouache that I used. There's a review for that up on my channel too. I think I posted it yesterday. And uh, yeah, it was a fun, a fun project. And I hope it inspires you to take some photos and you know, paint something that would otherwise feel a little bit ordinary. And with that, I will leave you and I hope you have a very inspiring day and a very happy holiday season. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.